military force was created to pave the way for billions of settlers and terraform inhospitable worlds. Once colonization was complete, the military force was disbanded, and a new force, the Armored Infantry, was created as the guardians of a new utopian Earth and its colonies. More than a hundred days after releasing for the Xbox 360's Live Arcade, this downloadable shooter has finally landed on the PS3's PlayStation Network. It seems this game has finally gotten over its PlayStation prejudice. Aw, kumbai freaking ya! It's Section 8 Prejudice! And don't worry, PlayStation fans, this game is every bit as sweet on your console as it was on the Xbox 360. That is to say, it's not really... it's not really all that sweet. I'm gonna ask you again. Where are you getting your technology? Who's been manufacturing your weapons? <laughs> you think you'll get answers? You don't even know the right questions! But, and here's some priceless video game analysis for you. It is kinda sweet. Section 8 Prejudice is a sequel to the 2009 original Section 8, a multiplayer-focused FPS from the small Texas developer TimeGate Studios. And this game addresses one of the big shortcomings of the first, that being the lack of a campaign. So in Prejudice, you get a full single-player mode complete with a story and trophies and even boring levels. On your toes, Captain. Almost lost you there. But Section 8 Prejudice also does a lot of things pretty well. Emphasis on a lot. The game's strongest asset is its sheer amount of content. Especially for a downloadable game, this is an impressive package. In addition to the campaign mode, the game also features several multiplayer modes. And once again, those are Section 8's focus. So you have Assault, which pits two teams against each other in a race to capture points on the map, and you have Conquest, which is a mission-based multiplayer mode. But then there's Swarm, which is a survival mode that just sends waves of enemies at you and just a few allies, and is also probably the most fun and addictive gameplay mode in Prejudice. But for all the game does well in terms of packing modes into a $15 downloadable package, the gameplay isn't quite as enthralling, and one of the reasons for that is the weaponry. As much of it as there is, none of it is all that satisfying to use. Whether you graze an enemy's temple or you put a bullet right through his forehead, it kind of feels the same either way. And it's unfortunate because I like some of the ideas here. You're playing as this badass in an armored suit. Kind of like the Terminator meets the Rocketeer. You can hover through the air, you can burst forward with speed. And these are interesting abilities, but the gameplay never really feels designed around them. Something has them spooked. We're Section 8. Spooked by what? In fact, the gameplay never really feels designed around anything. It doesn't have a whole lot of character, even though the potential definitely seems to be there. And frankly, even the campaign mode feels kind of thoughtless. And that is, it never feels cohesive. It's like, it's like a collection of multiplayer levels just strung together with some cutscenes. And some of the objectives in that campaign unfortunately reinforce that vibe. You're very close, Captain. Tap into the controls. I'll reconfigure the mech arms to disable the safety valves. But as with the first Section 8, this is a game for multiplayer. The campaign isn't going to keep your attention very long, so if you're interested in a solid downloadable shooter with a set of features that really rivals some retail releases, Section 8 Prejudice is a decent choice. Just don't expect anything mind-blowing. I guess... Head-blowing, maybe. Head-blowing off. This is unbelievable. I'm a dead-eye. Jammer 2 is ready for you.